Hello and welcome to the Open Data Week 2022 session on using New York City open data on school quality to recommend schools. Um, this presentation discusses how to use New York City open data to compare New York City Department of Education schools, some traditional data analysis frameworks, and a short demo on how I develop school recommendations using some machine learning approaches. My motivation for this is, was the challenge of ranking schools for school admissions. As a parent of a child in the application process for kindergarten admissions in New York City, I found myself researching school quality surveys to evaluate and compare schools in order to rank school choices. So let me elaborate on the challenge. So school admissions requires research. Parents or guardians must rank school programs reflecting their preference for their for schools starting in pre-K. The DOE requires ranking for admissions for elementary school, middle school, uh, and high school. In the elementary school admissions process, parents must rank up to 12 schools. And this is great for school choice, but it also requires the parent or guardian to really do their comparative research, which can be um, tedious and overwhelming, especially for parents and guardians doing this process for the first time. Most often, parents and guardians will find out what school they are zoned to or their neighborhood school and compare that against other options, typically within the same neighborhood or close by. Most of the time, these schools will be in the same school district. Information will be sought from school websites, online blog reviews, visits to the schools that they have open houses, and a heavy dose of anecdotal chats with other parents and school administrators. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, sorry. So now talking about the data, in my case, I was interested in the school quality data related to elementary schools. My child will be entering kindergarten next year, and I thought it would be a good idea to use relevant data to compare schools of interest. In the school comparison process, I noticed links to thorough evaluations on each school on a variety of metrics, including demographics, teacher, principal, and parental perspectives, academic curriculum, student performance, and safety. In this pursuit, I found a plethora of information from the New York City DOE data catalog in the New York City Open Data. And of particular interest was data on school quality surveys for elementary and middle schools. This data reflects a collection of school quality reports from each school. And this data is used to set expectations for schools and promote school improvement. According to the description on the data, school quality reports are organized around the frameworks for grade schools, which include six elements, which are rigorous, instruction, collaborative teachers, supportive environment, effective school leadership, strong family community ties and trust that drives student achievement and improves school improvement. I examined the most recent school survey collection across, across these schools, which was the 2019-2020 uh, school quality guide. According to the data revision history, the first version of the data collected was July uh, 2019. I'm assuming that the compilation for 2020 and 2021 haven't been put together as of yet, although I know individual school surveys have been taken in those years. This data contains 1,311 rows. Each row is unique to each school and 146 columns representing some survey attribute for each particular school. So just to understand what that looks like, I will show here, uh, I'm going to drop to this link, this web link to the 2019-2020 uh, school guide. And you'll see that, you know, what, what I was just mentioning, there are you know, different topical areas. So six high level topical areas, and each are broken down into a battery of, of questions of where, where survey responses were, were collected. So for example, rigorous education includes academic press, which then like breaks down to the percentage of teachers that might say that students feel challenged, for example, or teachers say that students have worked to, or hard work to do as well, other things like that. I not I don't have enough time to go through the plethora of information and, and, and each question in particular, but I'm just pointing you to the fact that this exists and it was extremely helpful for uh, the evaluation uh, process. Just to talk about a typical data analysis. So I just showed you uh, the example of a, of a, a school quality guide for a school in particular. Um, and, and typically how this works is we would compare schools we know about on the metrics that we care about. For example, my, my child 
or or my or neighbor's child currently attends PS such and such such, and I know that PS such and such and such are also in a close vicinity, and I really care about academic performance on math in the third grade. So I will compare these schools on the percentage of kids at a certain math level in third grade. So that's just an example. So the advantage of this approach is that it anchors our evaluation process on what we know. It can serve to confirm our beliefs about where schools stand with respect to each other. And moreover, it can reduce cognitive load. So the disadvantage is that we could be overlooking potentially good schools. And, and it's very, it might be very limiting in terms of breadth of school comparison. We're overlooking many potential schools that might be good and not so far away, or we might even be overlooking useful information that we hadn't really thought about. So to make this a little clearer, I'm going to jump into a collab notebook to demonstrate how we can use the potential, uh, the full potential of school survey data to inform our, our ranking decisions. So I'm going to jump into a collab notebook here and hopefully everyone sees this okay. And, and apologies for any lag. So just a, a few important links here. The school open the open data repository for the 2019-2020 survey is here. This is the site. I have the links at the back of the presentation, but I'm just pointing to here. And this tells you a little bit about what it, this data contains. 1,300 rows, 446 columns for attributes of the school surveys, a little description. There is an ability to visualize through a Plotly tool. You can export the, the actual data file, or you can use the API to extract the data itself. And this is the Socrata Open Data API, which I ended up using. And I went to, so in order to do that, I went to the API docs, which is here. And there, here in this, I used this to, to pull the data myself into a Jupyter notebook, essentially, for just my development. So let me jump into this. So firstly, just not to get into the weeds of every single part of the process, but in just for the sake of time, what I did is I imported a bunch of libraries, check for versions and stuff like that. Here's where I actually extract the data using the API. So it's very straightforward. You created the data frame with this data, have some functions here. One of the important things in, in, in just model development is feature engineering. So one thing that I noticed is that the data did not contain any attribute on district and borrow, but I could extract that from a feature. So I did it's very straightforward. So just to like see this, the here are like the counts of unique schools per district. So for example, the, the school with the district with the most schools is District 84, which I believe is a special district. And so that's one thing. And in terms of borough, like in terms of distribution of elementary schools, most elementary schools by volume are in borough K, which corresponds to Brooklyn, of course, followed by the Bronx, followed by Queens, followed by Manhattan, followed by Staten Island, Richmond County. So I would, and one device that I use is to group uh, the fields together using a data dictionary as an information source. So the guide includes a data dictionary, which essentially describes um, the data to some extent. So I did that and I grouped together, like, for example, demographic features or socioeconomic features, experience, teacher, principal experience features, attendance features. High school credits, of course, doesn't really pertain, but to elementary school, but it since this included a middle school component, this was there. It's not relevant really to my search. And then things like eighth grade metrics, fifth grade metrics, third grade metrics. So yeah, this is just a way to, a device to do data ring, data cleaning, and, and a little bit of data wrangling. I created the features here and some more cleaning. So you get the idea. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of back, uh, there's a lot of back end involvement just to get the data. So just to see some basic data exploration. Here's like what the data looks like after I did all that. So each row corresponds to a given school. The DBN is the, is my index that I set, and that will correspond to the identifier for a school. And it's typically the, the district, the M, the letter for the corresponding borough and the number of the school. So DBN. Here's just a selection of schools that I was interested in. So I was, I just, as I mentioned with. Traditional data analysis, you select on the schools that might be of interest to you. 
So I did that here just to kind of see how these different types of schools might compare relative to each other, or I might be interested in like just particular questions in the survey. So things like how interesting and challenging is your curriculum? There's actually just four choices for this proficient, well-developed, no data and developing. And just for district 30 elementary schools that I was looking at, it turns out most of these schools are all proficient and well-developed. As we can see here, proficient, well-developed, and just maybe one or two are developing. So there's not a lot of variation, which is just the sign of the schools there. Another question is how effective is teaching and learning? So I can see that most, most are proficient or, or developing. Um, so that's like sort of high level aggregates that you can get from this. Okay, so I'm going to just jump into something more more interesting, which is like the the typical data analysis stuff. So typically, like we're going to be interested in some things of interest, some metrics of interest. So, for example, I was looking at a plot, which is the percentage of students at level three or four in fifth grade out of students at level three or four in third grade versus the percentage of students at level three or four in fifth grade out of the students at level two in third grade in English language arts. And this is just looking at District 30 schools. And I see here that, for example, this school, PS234, is like has the best ratings in, in, in relative to the other schools in terms of English language arts proficiency at the fifth grade on this metric. And the size of each bubble corresponds to the size of the school in terms of enrollment. So the school is medium size and other schools are larger here. And then, of course, some schools are, you. the better schools will be more towards upper right on, on this, on this metric, of course. This is a, a similar plot, but for math, and you'll see that more schools are pretty, are higher here. So again, this is more just like typical data analysis stuff, which is usually uh, the way to go with just understanding what's in here. I just go down further. I'm just losing my, it's going down here. And now in terms of Oh, so this is an interesting metric that's often uh, looked at, which is the in the trust metric versus the academic and the, the effective school leadership of the school. So you'll see some schools are performed very high, and, and that's like a nice way to just visualize like, oh, there's a lot of trust between the principals and the parents and the teachers, and see how like that compares to the effective leadership of the school. So just looking at things in two dimensions on two metrics of interest. Okay. So that's again, traditional sort of uh, data analysis stuff. So now I'm going to talk about collaborative filtering, which is a method commonly used for recommendations in all types of like software products and, and other things that are like Netflix and things like that. And the idea with collaborative filtering is that you have users. In this case, the users are really just the schools themselves and items, which were like preferences of those users on specific items. In this case, the items would be the surveys, the pedigree of survey questions. So it's a, a way of expressing preferences. The point here is that we want to select the school of interest and see if there are schools in our district of interest that might be similar to it. So I don't know if anyone has an idea, has a school they want to select as their school of interest, but just for the, the sake of exposition, I looked at like the top five schools in New York City on the metric of proportion of fifth grade students at level three or four out of the students at level three or four in third grade in English language arts. And it turns out the school PS77, lat, lower lap school, which is in the Upper East Side, has the highest proportion of, of students of that category. So these are just the top five. I, I did a similar just sort on the top five for the math metric. So these are the top five for the math metric in the city. You see a lot of them have hundred percent. So that's you know, pretty, pretty interesting. So the first thing you do is I enter the school of interest here. So the school of interest will be, I'm just going to choose on the English language arts criteria. So I'll use that and that's my school of interest. And then what is my borough of interest? Uh, what is my district of interest? I'll just choose district 30, which is in Northwest Queens. So and if you don't know where the districts are located, here's the map of the districts. And you see here, this is District 30, Northwest Queens. And anyway, there's this is a nice little way to understand where they are located. And going back to the notebook here, I am looking at the, all the District 30 schools. And 
Okay, so I do a little bit of manipulation of the data. It's formatted the way I need to for this algorithm. And the first thing to understand is like, I'm going to perform a uh, singular value decomposition. So I don't want to get into matrix factorization map too much, but what this is, it takes an uh, orthogonal matrix of about the schools. So each school is the user matrix and the V is like the attribute matrix, which is all the non-redundant fe features about the school attributes from the survey. And then I impose a uh, diagonal matrix, which just decomposes based on uh, latent variables of interest. What the map behind this all does, and basically there's a bunch of transposes and decomposition choices I have to make. Um, not going to get into, I don't have time to get into all that here, but there's definitely analytical choices that one would make to do this properly. And then, yeah, so just go following along here. I look at the correlations of the schools to the school of interest. And it looks here, okay, firstly, first of all, the school of interest, which is the District 2 Manhattan PS77 school, is 100% correlated to itself, <laughs> so as we would expect. But the school that the, the schools that you're more, more interested would to be in, to look at would be District PS85 and District 30, PS234. They all have relatively high correlations. They're highly correlated to that school of interest in, in Manhattan. And that is taking into account all of the information in the survey, not just one metric, like all, all of the metrics. But many schools, you know, are very highly correlated. They're all like upper nine. One thing I want to stress is that one of the reasons we're seeing that like a lot of the schools are highly correlated is there might not be a lot of variation in, in the actual values of, in the survey itself. And so, for example, I want to look at the, the, the schools that are at least 98% correlated. And there are two schools that are 98% correlated. Those are um, the Peter... Pallone School, the, the, the Judge Pallone School at PS85 and PS2 in District 30 there. The schools that are highly correlated to PS77, how they show with respect to the math and English language arts metrics for level, uh, level three and four at the fifth grade. Looking at this, it definitely appears that PS77 School of Interest is very high uh, in terms of um, both those metrics. And the highly correlated schools are still pretty high, but there's definitely some distance between them in terms of proportions. So that that would be interesting to do. I probably don't have enough time to get into other things I, I tried, uh, more content-based recommendations. But I did do a, so I did try a principal components analysis, which tells me how much, how those schools might be clustered to each other. So for example, here, like in this PCA on two dimensions, PS77, was much higher. It was far away from the clusters of other schools. So that, that was one thing. I was looking to see how close these other schools are to each other and where there's, where schools that are definitely distant. And that matters in terms of understanding like, oh, how can you compare these schools like spatially by reducing all the dimensions in the survey data? So just in summary, recommenders that I chose are collaborative filtering, which tries to look at the similarity between schools from their survey scores in this user item approach using singular value decomposition and then content-based filtering which i can recommend schools based on the similarity of school survey scores to survey scores of interest using unsupervised learning methods this is just like the top of the, of the iceberg as they say and there's many different approaches for this there's even deep learning methods and all sorts of different ways to approach recommenders. So definitely just scratching the surface here. And then here are some useful links um, that you might want to go to to do this on your own or explore the surveys. So yeah, that's it. I'm out of time. I will, I, I'll look, I'll, I don't know if there's any uh, burning questions from the chat here that I know people are asking and I haven't been looking at these questions. Yeah, I would say this. If you have some burning questions on this, please reach out to me. My my information, my email is at is it on the first slide, and then the recording will be posted, of course. But if you have any questions about anything, I I didn't really get in too much to express my own personal use of this, but I thought this was a good way to complement my 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 search and do. Uh, ranking since I had to rank 12 schools for my child, but it's by no means like the only 
source of information you should use. There's reasons why you shouldn't only use survey data. There's anecdotal information, just visit school feel, what programs school offers. That That's something that's not in the survey. Definitely, it's just another set of information to help you in your decision. So that's it for me. Hopefully we can continue the, the chat and some other form.